Hey guys, welcome to another Prism tutorial. We're going to be focusing on making still images 3D using displacement maps. So, we're going to go from this still image to this. And you might wonder, what would you actually use this for? What would be the point in actually making something 3D from a still image? Why not film it that way? So when you don't have the opportunity to actually film anything and all you have is a still image and you want to just make it stand out to the audience a bit more, you can use this technique to create that 3D effect and really draw in your audience. Here we've got Mona Lisa and Albert Einstein as well. Looking fantastic in 3D there. So let's get started. We're going to be starting off in Photoshop and here you can see I've got two layers and I've already pre-cut them out. So if you want to know a good way of cutting out an image, we've got another tutorial called 2D to 3D using parallaxing and that goes through all the cutting out tools and some really neat ways to cut things out. Okay, so what we're going to need to make is we're going to be making a displacement map in Photoshop that we can use in After Effects. So what this map is, is a black and white representation of the depth in which her face is towards the camera. So if you think about black as being the furthest away object in the picture, and white being the closest object to the camera in the picture. So first of all, if you make a new layer, and fill it with black. So if you turn this op the opacity down to about 70% so you can see through the black and still see her face. Okay, so if we grab the brush tool and go up to the opacity and you're going to want to turn that down to about 15% as we're going to be adding layers onto her face to create the depth using the black to white. So if we switch to white and we'll change the size to around, yeah, let's say around 140, 150, there we go, that's great. Leave the hardness at about 100, that's fine. And we're gonna to wanna to start drawing around the entire face to start off. So the first layer is just showing that there's an object there and it's further forward than the background. So keep, keep the mouse held down and just paint her face and fill it in. The next area that we're gonna to wanna to draw is what's closer to us or what's closer to the camera. Her face and her hair are closer to the camera, so let's start drawing the outline for that. So I'm gonna go round her hair here, round her chin a little bit, that's it, and round her hair, and fill that in. Okay, then we're gonna go to the next area that's closest to us, which is her face. There we go, if we draw her face in, remember to keep the, the mouse held down the whole time. So now we've got four areas. We've got the black at the back, We've got the dark grey, then we've got the lighter grey, then we've got the almost white coming forward as we get closer to the camera. So now we're going to want to draw in some of her facial features, uh, such as the nose, the eyebrows, the mouth, just for more pronounced features that are should be closer to the camera than all the, all the hair and the background. So I like to think about this as a map. And on a map, if you look at a mountain, you see the contours of the mountain and sometimes if they're coloured then they'll get darker as they get closer to you or they'll get lighter as they get closer to you. This is exactly the same kind of thing. You're just making something for After Effects to understand what's further away and what's closer to the camera. So here we go. So we'll draw on the eyebrows, the nose, the mouth. We'll go for the cheekbones and that looks good. Now if we switch to black and we change the brush up to a bit to a slightly smaller brush and we're going to paint in our eyes because our eyes are a bit further back than the rest of it. If I turn this back to 100% you can see she looks lovely. Look at that clown face. That is brilliant. So you could just leave it like that if you want. I mean, if that's good for you, I mean, that's pretty good drawing for you. I'll stick that up online so you can use that as a desktop. It's pretty good. Pretty good art there. So if not, we'll carry on with the tutorial. So there we go. We'll go back to down to 70%. So that looks good. I think we're just going to add a few more contours on the nose because her nose is the most pronounced feature and it's closest to the camera. So the last thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of black where her teeth are as that's a bit that's a bit further back than her lips. And there we go. All right, so we have that really rough outline, but it's a bit too pronounced because we've used a 100% hardness. So we're going to want to go to filter blur, Gaussian blur and let's bring the radius up a little bit just so everything blends in. But just so we've now got our two layers and our bump map uh, so we're going to want to save this as a Photoshop file and bring it into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects. 
and let's get started. Let's import the file if you double click on the project area. So you're going to want to bring in the Photoshop file that you've saved and import it as a composition, retain layer sizes. And if you double click the composition, it will bring the composition into the timeline. So one thing you might notice as soon as you open it up is it's not 16 by 9 because that's the standard. You want a widescreen picture these days. No one uses the old tellies. Everyone's got a widescreen. If you press Command K, it will bring up the composition settings and we can change the height to the 1080 and that will bring it HD 1080 picture. So it might have cut off a little bit of Lucy so we'll just resize her so she fits into the frame a little bit better. Okay, so let's get started with the actual effect. As you can see I've got the displacement map hidden. We don't need that to be showing as long as it's there. So if we highlight Lucy here in the timeline and we're going to go to effects and presets and type in displacement map. If you drag this effect onto Lucy's layer, let me just rename these so it's a bit easier for you guys to see. So we've got Lucy, dismap and background. There we go. So on the Lucy layer, we've now got our displacement map. As you can see, her face has warped slightly. Uh, that's because it's using the displacement map layer as the same layer that she's on. So we don't want that. We want the, the map that we've just drawn on Photoshop to be the displacement map. So if we change that, you can see her face has gone back to normal and she looks a lot better now. What we want to use to grab the information from is we want to use the luminance because we've used black to white. So if we change both these to luminance and straight away when I start pulling around this max horizontal displacement you'll see you can move her face around and it's almost got that 3D effect. So first we're going to put these back to zero. We're going to animate these a long time so that her face changes. We're going to go for vertical displacement I think. So if we go to the timeline in the layer and you click the expand button on Lucy, expand button on effects and expand button on displacement map, you'll see you can change all of these. You can you can use the stopwatch to add a keyframe which will be able to start the animation. So if I change this to minus 10 and I'll click the stopwatch, that will add a keyframe at zero. So and if we go to three seconds and change it to 10 it will add in a keyframe on its own and you can see from that we've made an animation so if we play that a long time her face will change so, so let's make that a little bit more harsh so we can see a bit a, a larger difference throughout that time you can notice if you if you pull these around too much you just get the facial melting you might just melt her face off so you don't really want to go too much it's the subtle differences that will trick people's eyes into believing that it's a 3D image don't go too overboard you'll just warp her face and make her look like a melting witch you don't want that so once we've put those subtle changes in you can now see we're getting that, that really nice 3D effect but there's something not quite right about it it doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to work so well so what we need to do is make the background move as well. So as we've got Lucy on an individual layer to the background, so we can use a camera to add to this effect. So if we go up to our layer, new and camera, and we'll change this name to camera settings, preset 35 millimeter, and that's great. And we'll go strip back up to layer and new null object. So if you change that name to camera controls, and use the pick whip here to parent the camera to the to the null object. Now we use the null object as the camera controls as it's just an easier way to control the camera and move it around. You want to go to the 3D box and you want to check all of the 3D boxes so that all the layers are now 3D and you can see if I move the null object here I'll, I'll move around the camera and it gets that really nice bit of movement which is just needed to add to this displacement. So if I expand the camera controls and the transform you can see it's you'll bring up the position. You want to use it that position. Click on the stopwatch you get the keyframe and bring it to about three seconds in and we'll just we'll just do a little tilt tilt up and down like that and as you can see that's really added to the effect. 
So that's pretty much it. That's how you get that effect. That's how you make a 2D image 3D. I'm just going to add a little add a little cinema scope that I've made in Photoshop just to really just to add that cinema feeling to it. And there you go. That is a way to make 2D images a bit more 3D using displacement maps. So if you like this tutorial, click that little button up there and subscribe. You'll get updates on our upcoming tutorials. We've got other videos, all interesting stuff for you guys. And we're going to be giving away stock footage and all sorts of really helpful things for filmmakers. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name's Glenn Lewis-Smith and I'll see you next time.